will be here for just a second. Let's take a quick detour down some familiar territory. So, the, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? We know this, you know this. Uh, he created the dry land, the earth, he created the expanses of water, the sea. And what, what did he say when he looked at that? That the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew Bible says that God looked at his creation, what he had just done, and he said, Zetov, it is good. And that wasn't enough. God moved on. He created the vegetation. He created the plants, the trees, the fruits, even turnips for some reason. And he looked at that and he said again, Zetov, it is good. Not necessarily what I would dis describe turnips as, but I'm not God. And he kept going. God kept creating. He created the birds and the creatures of the sea and of the land. And God looked at what he had just created again. And he said again, Zetov, it is good. Then finally, in his own image, God created man. And he said again, Zetov, it is good. And God looked at his handiwork, everything he had just created from nothing. And he looked at the heaven, earth, plant, animal, man. And he said again, Zetov, it is good. But it is not good that man should be alone. Then God, from the very flesh of man, brought the woman into existence. It was, it was then and only then that the status of God's creation changed. It was no longer Zetov, it is good, but it was now Zetov Me'ot, it is very good. And then and only then could God halt his act of creation and rest. Now think about this, ladies, and think about it hard. The universe, we're talking about the universe here, was not complete without you. Don't let it go to your head. But with that in mind, if you are dehumanizing yourself, if you are going out with these sleazy men who just want to sleep with you before marriage and you are defiling your own body, I cannot emphasize enough how much you undervalue yourself. Any man worth his weight in salt is going to commit his life to you first because he knows that that's what you're worth. His life, his freedom. <laughs> Ladies, do not give yourselves away for anything less than that. That's, that's what God charges, by the way. That's by his design. If the boy wants the girl, he gives his life to her. Nothing short of that is good enough. Nothing short of that even comes close to good enough. If a man is trying to get you naked, ladies, before he marries you, he doesn't love you. <laughs> Leave him in the dust. Please, for your own good, leave him behind. Move on with your life. Men, I'm talking to you now. God's creation was not complete until man had a woman in his life. One woman for one man. That was his design. God did not give Adam 700 women to go screw around with them. He gave him one woman. You choose one woman. Commit your, commit your life to her and she to you. You cherish her, love her, honor her. Okay, and, and you enjoy her. I mean, sexual pleasure is good. It's not to be avoided. It is by God's design. It's meant that way, but, but it is to be pursued in the right way. The problem is that everybody else is pursuing it the wrong way, the absolute worst possible way. Look, every way but God's way is destructive. Make no mistake. As I always say, you will, you will never regret waiting for your spouse. But you will always regret not waiting. Marry the girl and enjoy her in the way that God intended. That is God's gift to you for doing things his way. Okay, and the bond that results from doing things the right way is profound. There's nothing like it on this earth. I promise you that. And finally, of course, don't forget to sire and raise children with the girl. Okay, okay. create a legacy with her. That is a life of substance, something you can actually be content and fulfilled with. That is God's design for man. This institution is the only thing left over from when the world was still perfect. Now you can play the game all you like and waste your life, along with the countless pieces of yourself that will inevitably be lost when you engage in the promiscuous lifestyle, the self-destructive lifestyle, pursuing an appetite that will never be sated. All right. Or, alternatively, you could forsake the games of fools and immature lowlifes and instead do things the right way, because yes, there is a right way. And you will find that far more satisfying and fulfilling. I promise you that. God knew what he was doing when he designed us and when he established the institution 
of marriage. Once again, I can't say it enough, this is the, the first institution that God ever created, and it is the only one to survive the fall. God created marriage. He designed marriage for us while the world was still perfect. This was his perfect design. The only thing that makes it imperfect is us, okay? Don't waste your life on this frivolous nonsense that the world promises you of earthly, fleshly pleasures and no commitment. Live a life that you will be glad you lived in the end, when it all comes down to it. Not, not to mention a life that your Father in Heaven will be proud of you for having chosen. All right. Respect yourself. Honor all of your prospective partners. Get married, have children, and create a legacy. And of course, God bless you all.